الحمد للہ القادر الجبار والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله المختار وعلى آله الأطهار وأصحابه الخيار إلى يوم القرار أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم Respected Chairpersons, Honorable Chief Guest and Dear Audience First of all, I would like to greet all of you with the Islamic greeting Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It's an occasion of utmost pleasure for me to be here as a part of this Silver Jubilee program celebrated by MMERC Alumni Mumbai I want to take this golden opportunity and deliver a short speech on the topic of equality in Islam. Dear audience, the most important principle of Islam is equality and justice. This value of equality is not to be mistaken for or confused with identicalness or stereotype. As per the teaching and decree of Allah Almighty, all people are equal but they are not necessarily alike. There are differences of abilities, skills, physical power, mental strength, potentials, ambitions, wealth, and so on. But none of these differences can by themselves establish the status of superiority of one man or race over another. The stock of man, the color of his skin, the amount of wealth he has, and the degree of prestige he enjoys have no bearing on the character and personality of the individual as far as Allah is concerned. The only distinction which Allah recognizes is the distinction in piety. The only criterion which Allah applies is the criterion of goodness and spiritual excellence. In the Quran, Allah Almighty says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَىٰ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and have made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed the most honored of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous. Indeed the Allah is knowing and acquainted. Surah Hujrat, chapter number 49, verse number 13. Dear friends, this is to assert that in Islam, no nation is created to be above other nations or to rise above them. Man's worth in the eyes of man and in the eyes of Allah is determined by the good he does and by his obedience to Allah. The differences of race, color or social status are only incidental. They do not affect the true stature of man in the sight of Allah. Again, the value of equality are deeply rooted in the structure of Islam. It stems from six basic principles. Number one, all men are created by one and the same eternal God, the supreme Lord of all. Number two, all mankind belong to the human race and share equally in the common parentage of Adam and you alayhi salam. Number three, Allah is just and kind to all his creatures. He is not partial to any race, age or religion. The whole universe is his dominion and all people are his creatures. Number four, all people are born equal in the sense that no one brings any position with him and they die equal in the sense that they take back nothing of their worldly belongings. Number five, Allah judges every person on the basis of his own merits and according to his own deeds. Number six, Allah has conferred on man a title of honor and dignity. Intellectuals, such are some of the principles behind the value of equality in Islam. When this concept is fully utilized, it will leave no place for prejudice or persecutions. And when this divine ordinance is fully implemented, there will be no room for oppression or suppression. Concepts of chosen and gentile peoples, words such as privileged and condemned races, expressions such as social castes and citizens will all become meaningless and obsolete. Dear friends, the Prophet Muhammad said, 
O mankind, your Lord is one and your Father is one. You all descended from Adam and Adam was created from earth. He is most honored among you. In the sight of Allah, who is most upright, no Arab is superior to an Arab, no colored person to a white person, or a white person to a colored person, except by taqwa, reported by Ahmad in tirmidhi In another narration, the Prophet was asked, Who among men is the most favored by Allah? He replied, A man who does the most good to people, reported by At-Tabrani. Therefore, it would be unrealistic to assert the absolute equality of human beings. Although humans are basically equal in rights, duties, and accountability, and there is some degree of similarity in physical and mental traits, which enables them to understand and apply rules and laws. At the same time, it is obvious that there is a natural diversity among human beings in, in rights, duties, and accountability. Therefore, there will be limitations in natural, social, and political positions. Some of the limitations are temporary, some are infrequent, some frequent. However, a limitation is specific to a particular situation. It may not be generalized to inequality and other rights. A person who is morally upright is not equal to a crook in terms of morality, but they may be equal otherwise. Nor is an intelligent person equal to a dull one, but they are equal in other spheres. In the same way, a woman is not identical to man in her traits, gifts, and abilities. However, she is quite equal in other rights and responsibilities. Dear audience, now I would like to wind up my speech with a verse of the Holy Quran, chapter number 2, verse number 2 to 8, where Allah says, And due to the wives is similar to what is expected of them according to what is reasonable. Na koi banda raha, na koi banda nawaz, wama alayna illa al